Okay, so this week we are going to finish up the lab from last week. Um, and so last week we standardized NaOH and standardized HCl. And the point of that was for us to determine the amount of antacid in commercial products like Tums or Milk of Magnesia. And so this week we're going to use those standardized solutions to titrate our antacids and then do some math and figure out what the, uh, the amount of antacid in those products is. Okay, so um, you recall from our discussion last week that Tums is um, a solid product, right? It comes in kind of little wafers and it's composed of calcium carbonate. And so calcium carbonate uh, dissociates into a calcium ion and a carbonate polyatomic anion. So this carbonate anion is a base. And so we can see that here that if we treat carbonate anion with some protons with an acid, so an acid base reaction that generates carbonic acid, H2CO3. Carbonic acid is unstable. And so it decomposes into an H2O molecule and a molecule of CO2. Uh, and so this is neutral, and so we've taken an acid and a base and neutralized them to H2O and CO2. Uh, and so sometimes if you've ever taken Tums, maybe you've noticed it made you burp afterwards, that's because you're generating CO2 gas inside your stomach. Stomach acid is made of hydrochloric acid, HCl. The approximate molarity of stomach acid is... 0.16 molar. Uh, of course, that changes based on how recently you've eaten and different people have uh, different genetics and so they have, it's, it's different for different people, but approximately that's what it is for most people on average. And so the, if we have HCl in our stomach and we take a Tums, then this is the reaction that occurs. Uh, remember that carbonate requires two moles of acid, two H pluses, because it has a two minus charge. And so we need two moles of HCl to react with one mole of calcium carbonate. That generates this carbonic acid and a mole of calcium chloride. And remember that carbo carbonic acid is unstable and it decomposes into water and CO2. So this is the full balanced reaction for uh, what occurs when you eat a Tums, what happens in your stomach, the neutralization of the acid. Okay, with milk of magnesia, remember milk of magnesia is magnesium hydroxide. And so this dissociates into a magnesium cation and two hydroxide anions. Uh, these are bases, obviously OH minus base. And so H plus acid plus OH minus base makes water, which is neutral. So a neutralization reaction. And so uh, milk of magnesia can neutralize the acid in our stomachs because it contains a base. And so again, this, our stomach acid is HCl. So two moles of HCl. And again, we need two moles here because one mole of magnesium hydroxide generates two moles of hydroxide. And so we need two moles of hydrochloric acid to react with the two moles of hydroxide. That will generate two molecules of water and one equivalent of magnesium chloride. So these are the balanced reactions for the antacids that we're going to be looking at. And so we're not going to react them in our stomachs. We're going to react them on the lab bench. And how we're going to do that is we have uh, our standard, what we have standardized from last week, we standardized sodium hydroxide and you standardized HCl with an approximate concentration of about 0.16, which is to simulate stomach acid. So the HCl that we standardized last week is the stand-in for our stomach acid. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so from last week, we have these two standardized solutions. So this week, what we're going to do is react the Tums and the milk of magnesia with our standardized HCl according to the reactions that we just looked at, right? Because these reactions, when we look at these antacids, we're going to react them with HCl, right? So that's the eight, just like the HCl that we standardized last week. 
we're going to use an excess of the standardized HCl. And then after that reaction is complete, we won't have reacted all of the HCl because the, we're going to use an excess. We're going to use more than we need at this point. We're going to use a lot of HCl in step one. So that means that once we add atoms to our HCl, we'll still have some HCl left. Then we're going to titrate the remaining HCl, what didn't react with the antacid, and we're going to titrate that with our standardized sodium hydroxide solution. And so the way that this works is we have standardized HCl. We're going to use an excess, but because it's standardized, we know exactly how many moles of HCl are going to be in that solution, exactly how many. So we don't know exactly how many moles of Tums or milk of magnesia are going to be in what we add, but we know exactly how many moles of acid. And then after the, this reaction is done in step one, then we'll titrate the remaining HCl with standardized sodium hydroxide, and we'll know exactly how much HCl is remaining because we have our standardized sodium hydroxide of exact concentration. So because we know exactly how much HCl we started with, and we know exactly how much HCl was left after the reaction was done, then we can find the difference, and that's exactly how much HCl reacted with either the Tums or the milk of magnesia. So that's logically how we're going to work through this. And so practically what it's going to look like in the lab, Tums is a solid, right? It comes in these kind of little wafers. And so we have to grind this up. So we're going to put it in the pestle, in the, in, put it in the mortar, grind it up with the pestle, right? Turn it into a fine powder. And so then we'll have this Tums powder and we're gonna have an excess of standardized HCl, like 100 mils or something. Way more than we need to react with the amount of Tums that we're putting in there. So we'll put the Tums in, stir it around, it's gonna bubble, right? It's gonna make CO2, stir it around, wait for the reaction to be finished. When the reaction's completely done, the Tums will have dissolved, but not all of the HCl will be reacted. Some of the HCl will be unreacted, and so, We'll take that solution of unreacted HCl and we'll put it underneath our burette that's full of standardized sodium hydroxide, add a couple drops of phenolphthalein, and then we're going to titrate until it's pink. And so we know exactly how much HCl we started with at this point. We'll put exactly 100 mils in there, for example. And then whatever is left over, we're going to titrate and we'll know exactly how much was left after the titration is finished because we can do some math, right? Figure out how much NaOH we added. So then using that, we can figure out how much carbonate was in the Tums. All right, so with the milk of magnesia, we're going to do that similarly. Except, uh, practically, there's a couple of things to consider, which is that the milk of magnesia is uh, a liquid, and actually it's a suspension, which means that it's not very soluble. The magnesium hydroxide is not very soluble in water, so it's kind of like a chalky powder that is suspended in the water. So you got to shake it up really well because all of the, the solid and the suspension kind of ends up at the bottom of the bottle. But the point is that milk of magnesia is very viscous, because it's, uh, because it's not really dissolved. It's just kind of like chalky solid in water. So it's too viscous to measure volume effectively. It won't pipette very well because it's so thick. So we can't measure an exact volume of milk of magnesia if not all of it comes out of the pipette. So instead, if we need to know an exact volume in order for us to do our titration and do the math at the end, then we're gonna weigh it instead because it's easier to weigh it than it is to find the volume. So if we weigh it, then we can use the density of milk of magnesia to find the exact volume. Because again, being that it's uh, a con this is a solution, the milk of magnesia is a solution of magnesium hydroxide or a suspension rather, but it does have a concentration listed. So being that it has a concentration listed, we need to know what the volume is that we're going to titrate but the volume is too hard to measure. So we're going to measure the mass on a balance and divide the mass by the density, which will tell us the exact volume of milk of magnesia that we're gonna titrate. So we'll do that by putting a little bit on a watch glass or something. We'll put some milk of magnesia 
on some watch glass or, or maybe even better in the beaker that you're going to add water to so that you know exactly how much is in that beaker. Put it in some weighing vessel. We'll get the mass. We'll divide by the density so that we know the exact volume of milk of magnesia that we're titrating. Then we'll put the milk of magnesia. We're going to add it to HCl just like we did with the Tums and it's going to react. We're gonna stir it around, wait for that reaction to be complete. We have way more HCl than we need, so some of the HCl is going to be unreacted after the milk of magnesia is done reacting. Then we'll take that unreacted HCl and we will titrate it with the standardized sodium hydroxide, just like before. Of course, we have to add some phenolphthalein to make sure it's actually gonna turn pink. Titrate, our solution turns pink, and then math. And then we can figure out how uh, much hydroxide was in the milk of magnesia and how much carbonate was in the Tums. All right, so let's check out some math, see how we're going to do that exactly. So an example is we add one Tums to 100 milliliters of 0.16 molar HCl and titrate whatever is left, the remaining HCl, with our standardized sodium hydroxide that has this exact concentration. And it takes 31.00 mils of standardized NaOH to reach the endpoint. How many milligrams of calcium carbonate are in Tums? So we took our one Tums, grinded it up, put it into 100 mils in a big beaker, and then we're gonna titrate what's left. So I need to know I start with 100 mils of HCl exactly. I know exactly the concentration of HCl because we standardized it. So I know that if I have 100 mils of HCl of this concentration, then I have exactly this many moles of HCl. After I react the Tums and I take my HCl, right? So that's, I have 0.16 moles of HCl in here before I add my antacid. And then I'm gonna add, add the antacid, and stir it around, wait for the reaction to be done. And then once the reaction's done, I'm gonna titrate the HCl, and it takes 31 mils of sodium hydroxide to titrate what's left. So if I take 31 mils of sodium hydroxide and I know the exact concentration, then that means it took 31 mils of sodium hydroxide to get the end, the end point, and this is where that end point was, 0 0.006 moles of sodium hydroxide. So notice I started with 0 0.016 moles of HCl, uh, but when the, after I titrated, I only titrated 0 0.006 moles. So that difference is what was reacted with the Tums. That's what the Tums reacted with. So we're just gonna take the difference between these two values uh, zero, right? Well, first let's understand that if I have this many moles of NaOH, then that means that I have the same number of moles of HCl at the end point, right? So first we'll convert that to moles of HCl. Sorry, those are weird looking zeros. Uh, so the same number of moles of HCl, and then we'll take these values and subtract them. So 0 0.016 moles of HCl that I started with minus the 0 0.006 moles of HCl that was remaining after I reacted the antacid, and we get 0 0.0, if I could do math, 0 0.0100, it's too many, it's too many decimal places. There's my calculator. Point zero one six minus point zero zero seven zero zero seven eight nine 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 two two okay zero point zero zero nine 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 two two moles of HCl and this number right here this is what reacted with the antacid So that means this is how many moles of antacid were in the Tums, all right? So then we're gonna take that over here, 
0.0099922 moles of Tums, which is calcium carbonate. And calcium carbonate has a molar mass of just about exactly 100. So 100.09 grams of calcium carbonate per mole. Oh, and we, the, the question asked for this in milligrams. So we'll convert to milligrams. All right, we've got, oops, this many moles times 100.09 grams per mole times 1,000 milligrams. 1,000 milligrams of calcium carbonate. So there was 1,000 milligrams of calcium carbonate in the one Tums tablet that I ground up and reacted. So that's how the math is going to work. And we'll do the same thing with the milk of magnesia. Okay, so that's pretty much it for today. Um, if, you're, if you need more information, if you're still confused, send me an email. Uh, we, I'm going to go over this again at the beginning of lab tomorrow just because of the circumstances today because I couldn't be there in person. So we'll go over this again tomorrow just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, and if you have any questions, please send me an email. Okay, thank you.